Hello and welcome everyone to Handsome Career Connect, a platform to hear from experts who are making a profound in their area of expertise. Tune in to learn from experts on how to quick start and elevate your career journey. I'm your host, Hardeep Kaur, Vice President of Enrollment and Marketing at Handsome College. Today with us, we have Visola Tijani, a business and financial analysis expert with a strong background in finance, technology, and social media. As a founder and CEO of Wiz Queen, Visola is dedicated to promoting financial literacy via social media. She's not only a dynamic social media influencer, but also a YouTube woman mentor. She has also been nominated for a RBC Women of Influence Award, inspiring many others to achieve financial education. Let's dive into her journey and hear more about her insights into the world of finance, tech, and social media. Visola, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much, Adip. It's such a pleasure to be here as well. Thank you, Visola. Uh, Visola, you moved to Canada from Nigeria. What is your story from a newcomer to be a nominee of RVC Women of Influence Award? I mean, moving to Canada as a new immigrant, as an adult, is very challenging. You would always face struggle along the way, but I was very determined to, you know, change my story, change my life, change the life of my family and those around me. So despite all of the hiccups along the way, I still tried my best to push through. You know, I came um, five years ago, just right before the pandemic hit, and I came at a very young age, at the age of 23, as a permanent resident. I had no friends or family in Canada. I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. And um, of course, it was very challenging, but today I'm very glad I made that move because it's been rewarding in so many ways. Yeah, no, that's that's very, very true. You know, once you take the steps and then you see the results and it's, it's actually motivating you even more, right? Yeah. So as we mentioned in your introduction, you wear many hats. You are a businesswoman, you're a financial analyst, content creator, and so much more. How do you integrate these diverse fields in your daily work? I mean, it's quite exhausting, I must say. Like you said, it's, it's many hats, yeah. but I have mastered the heart of time management. That's something that I, I've come to understand that is very important. So I schedule my time, I use time blocks, and I try to be as productive as I can whenever. Then I've also learned the skill of outsourcing tasks to other people, just so I don't have to do everything all by myself. Because as a content creator, you also have to film video, you are your own videographer, editor, um, social media manager, you pitch brands and all of these things. So, so many things all at the same time. But um, I have started to let people take charge of working on some things that I don't like doing. For example, video editing. I really do enjoy video editing and it takes so many hours to do that. So I just let someone else do that. And I focus on things that I'm um, that I enjoy doing the most and things that I have the best skill at. So I would say time management is what has helped me manage this many hats that I'm wearing. So delegation, right? Yeah. So the art of delegation, the yeah. responsibilities to other people. That's yeah. that's awesome. Um, so in the process of delegating tasks to other people, like then how do you balance between the responsibility and the authority? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's something that I figure out along the way because there really isn't like a set method or strategy for you to do that. I just try my best to say, okay, if I'm working on this, maybe, and it's taking too much time, maybe let someone else take off the heavy burden and take the most stressful part of it and I can just do the finishing touch or perfect the act. And other times it's like I start working on it then I find that okay, maybe I'm not able to even figure it out then I just say okay, just delegate it to someone else to do it. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, you founded WizQuaint, right? Yeah. Um, could you share your thought process on how you brought your idea into the reality? So WizQuaint is actually my name. It's my nickname or my social oh. media name as you can call it. Yes. Wiz Innovations Inc. is the business which I founded and um, Wiz Queen started off with me having so many knowledge, so many ideas that I want to share and I just feel like I, I have so much knowledge in me that I think people out there can benefit from and in what better way can I actually share all these things that I have than using social media. Mm -hmm. When I came to Canada, I had to figure out the financial space here on my own because 
if you're from, if you're if you were not born here or you didn't grow up here the financial system is completely different from where you're coming from from back home the credit card system is different the banking system is different for the most part for most people and when you move to canada you have to figure out a lot of things as a new immigrant right so i was intentional about learning how the financial system work here and i know other newcomers like myself would have struggled as well so i figured okay why not use social media which is a platform that most people use to teach the skill that I have, which is financial literacy, lifestyle, and travel. Wow. And then while you were building your brand, did you face any challenges? And what were those challenges that you faced? Um, and how did you overcome them? Of course, just like building any other business, you would always face challenges. And I don't think they are evitable. You would always come across them, even as even as you grow in your business, you still have those struggles and challenges along the way. I would say when I first started, I would say it was mostly like not being able to get support from people around me. And it's not because they don't want to, it's because they just don't understand the essence of it. Over time, my mom would be concerned like, why are you posting videos on social media? Why are you talking about this and that? Why are you talking about money? Like you're giving too many people access into your personal life. Yeah. And now she has now understood the essence of it. Now when she even watches my video, or maybe I'm going somewhere, she say, oh, are you going to make a vlog about it? Are you going to make a video about <laughs> it? I'm like, yeah, of course I am. Yeah. So now she understands better. But in the beginning, even friends as well, they couldn't understand the essence of it. Like, what's the point? What's your motive? If you're trying to make money, you can get mm -hmm. a job instead of doing this. But for me, what's most important is the impact that I'm able to make in people's life, not necessarily the money. The money can come after. So um, that, I would say, has been my biggest struggle or challenge along the way. Yeah. And then given your experience as a social media influencer, uh, what advice would you give to someone looking to enter this space, uh, especially in terms of creating meaningful content responsibly? Because you can create a content, but you should also make sure you own that responsibility to make sure it's meaningful and impactful. Very true. Um, I would say you should prioritize giving value. Know the kind of audience that you want to build. It might be a very small audience size, maybe a large audience. Figure out what your niche would be. So what your niche is would be the kind of topic you are passionate about, would be your area of interest and all that. Then figure out the social media you enjoy using the most. For some people, I find that maybe for younger generations these days, it's usually like TikTok, Instagram sometimes. And um, for like the older generation, not too old, um, but like some people prefer Facebook as well or YouTube. So depending on your preference, you can choose a platform. But I would say in order for you to make sure that you're giving the most meaningful content that would not come to haunt you in the future, because again, remember the internet never forgets. It's very important for you to figure out the kind of audience you want to build, the kind of community you want to have, and also the kind of topic you want to talk about. Talk about something that are of interest to you. Stay away from topics that are not going to be valuable to you or to your audience. If it's a very sensitive topic, if it's a polarizing topic, just avoid them. I do know that topics like that would get you more visibility quickly. It would help you grow faster, but don't. There's always the temptation that you want to grow really fast and you want to get into things like that. Try as much as you can to avoid them. Think about the value that you're giving and that would continue to inspire you. As a matter of fact, if you want to do content creation, think impact first, then money would follow. While you were working on your brand, right, um, especially for the social media, did you seek any mentorship or guidance? Oh, yes, I did like coaching programs, I did mentorship as well. But prior to that, I was mostly learning on YouTube. And that's what I would recommend for most beginners. So if this is something that you want to start, I would say maybe start on YouTube, go on social media, watch videos that will teach you how to maybe edit, how to master storytelling, how to write scripts and all that. You can start from free resources because not everyone has the money to start getting mentorship or coaching because it could be very expensive. So I would say start with the free resources you can use, exhaust those options first, then you can start to seek coaching or mentorship. I personally believe that coaching and mentorship will take you far in your career, in your anything you're trying to do, even social media, anything that you're trying to do, if you're able to seek coaching or mentorship, it would really help you go far and faster. But I would always recommend to exhaust your free options first before you start to invest in that. As a matter of fact, whenever you get coaching or mentorship, see it as though you are investing in yourself and your future self would be happy and thank you for it. If, for example, like 
your channel focus on financial literacy, right? Um, there's so many channels who are focusing on specific field or specific topic. What do you think is the value of education in there, uh, college education in there? Of course, 100%, college education is very important. I do have a bachelor's degree in finance, mm -hmm. so it definitely helps me with my financial literacy topics, right? It doesn't mean that if you are someone that you're in art, you can't come online and talk about financial mm -hmm. literacy, no. It just means that having a degree or even work experience would help you stand out from the multitude of people on social media talking about the same thing, because there is a lot of professionalism that comes or that you learn from going through school or even um, working in a professional workspace. Sometimes you have to respond to emails, you have to pitch brands, you have to, for example, we are here having this. If I didn't have like the professional experience, I wouldn't be able to translate that into my content creation business. And mm -hmm. all of those things feeds into each other. So if you think that you going through college is going to be a waste and you wouldn't get any value out of it because you want to do content creation, let me tell you, you're lying to yourself. It all feeds into each other. Whatever value you get from this, you will always translate to that. And it's, it's always spreads in that way. Yeah, you said it very well. <laughs> and then coming back to tech and social media, with introduction of AI, right, artificial intelligence, trends evolve so quickly. You learn something and then something new is coming. <laughs> How do you stay current and ensure that your content remains relevant and impactful? Very true. I like that you mentioned the use of AI, especially because a lot of things are changing so quickly. Gone are the days where you have to, like, you know, spend several hours doing research. These days, you can just go on ChatGPT, give it a topic idea, and it will do all the research for you. So, yeah, I would say social, um, AI is disrupting the space, but in a good way. I would say anyone that is not utilizing AI or all of those technologies right now, they are being left behind. They will be left behind because people are using them and it's helping them make changes to their content creation, helping them with their reach. I don't think AI would replace content creators in any way, shape or form. I think there would still always be a market for you. Even instead, AI would bring opportunities for you. For example, I see people now doing um, video editing as a career using AI tools, right? So that's another job that has been open for several people that might be interested in using that. There's also things like copywriting that you can use AI to do, and you make money off of doing that. So there are so many opportunities out there. I would always encourage anyone that is maybe a content creator or an aspiring one to take advantage of the opportunities that AI presents to grow their content creation or even their career as well. How can aspiring entrepreneurs leverage your journey in financial literacy to kickstart their own businesses? Um, there are so many ways for you to leverage even my journey and other people's journey. I would say you should, you can go back to my previous video and see my journey. You would see that there has been a tremendous growth over time. And one thing I always want people to keep in mind is that it's not going to par be perfect from the jump. It's something that will progress and improve over time. As an entrepreneur, you would face so many challenges, you would hear so many hearts, but just know that it's in the beginning. Over time, as things start to get better, things will become easier for you. So if you see my journey, you see other entrepreneurs' journey as well, it should inspire you to know that things do get better along the way. I've been doing this for a long time, and there's a lot of opportunities, there's a lot of potential, and things, things keep getting better every single day. So this is just an inspiration for anyone out there that is aspiring to know that there's going to be growth, it's going to progress, and you'd see improvements over time. Yeah, and what um, message do you want to share with somebody who's looking for a quick turnaround? Okay, start something today, I need results tomorrow. Honestly, I don't believe in things like get rich quick. Yeah. I don't believe in things like, um, like accelerated results. Because trust me, if you seek things like that, it's going to crumble all at once. Things like, for example, I'm just going to mention this one, like cryptocurrency. Those are ways to make money really quickly. I'm not going to say those things don't work. Mm -hmm. But you know, the higher the risk you take, the higher the return you could get. And when you think about risk, I think people only think about the potential returns that they could get. But they also don't think about the fact that they could lose it all at once. Right. So I would say if you're looking for something that you want to do really quick today to get a quick turnaround tomorrow, that might not be content creation. That might not be running a business. That might be a gamble. That might be a lot of risk. So you want to ask yourself, 
would you rather commit to start something and build it and see good results over time or do you want something that could potentially crumble and you lose everything all within the blink of an eye that would be a question for you yeah. that's very well said it's a combination of your knowledge your skills and also your patience yeah you need that as well um and um i think you kind of answered this but how do you define success and in what ways has your education contributed to that definition of success that's a very good question i love it um, mm -hmm. my definition of success one is to be able to see impact in people's life that i'm making so every time i walk through the grocery store I, or i go to an event and i meet people say oh i watched your videos when i came to canada or i watched this i was able to do this and do that based on the video tutorials you have online it warms my heart it makes me feel like oh yes people are making changes in people's life and helping people be the best version of themselves so that for me makes me know that i'm making i'm successful i'm doing great things then there's also the financial part of it which is good sometimes i like to think about it as a like i'm making income while making an impact that's my goal that's my mantra that's the mission of my brand and that's what i continue to do so if i'm able to attain both things but prioritizing the impact and value that i'm giving to my audience that is success to me um i do want to touch on one thing though uh, that you mentioned that uh, changing lives of other people is is the thing which keep you going right at henson as well our uh, mission is also to change life trajectories for generational impact and which is through education so i think uh, it's so meaningful that somebody's coming to you getting the knowledge getting the advice and then is getting successful after so yeah, that yeah. there's nothing else more satisfied than yeah, seeing yeah. other people changing their lives absolutely. because of your support absolutely yeah and then um there is a saying that it's not about an idea but it's about making that idea happen in short what will be your top 3 advice to our audience who thrive to make their ideas happen and become successful that's a good one i think most people don't have an ideation problem they have an implementation problem most people have like ideas they have inspiration they have goals but they just don't act they don't implement and sometimes you feel like maybe they have knowledge gap but no there is a lot of resources out there there is a, like your education for example you learn all of these things but you don't actually implement you don't take action my advice for you would be because a lot of people are also overthinkers and that could also hinder you my advice would be to get out of your head take action even if it's just one single thing that you can do every single day make sure it feeds into that bigger goal that you have and just take action don't look at what the results will be don't have high expectation just move try one new thing every single day and walk towards the goal that you have set for yourself my second advice would be to surround yourself with like minded people having a community of people that are also walking the same path as you or have the same goal or similar goals as you would truly inspire you and sometimes it might not be that you people have the exact same interest or the exact same goals but them just having like even their own goals but then you come around together to keep each other accountable and work towards your individual goals as well that would help you stay motivated and inspired and if you ever feel like you're doubting yourself maybe just take a step back take a break and reassess the whole situation but try as much as you can to get out of your head because for the most part the reason people are not able to go from ideation to implementation is because they are all in their head or you are over planning you don't need to do all of that just take action that's very well said visola and uh, and that's a wrap of our informative conversation with visola tijani thank you so much visola for sharing your empowering journey and invaluable insights into the realms of finance and social media and as visola mentioned turning ideas into reality often starts with believing in yourself and taking the first step so don't wait take your first step embrace challenges and opportunities for growth and surround yourself with a supportive community that encourages your vision at henson we offer a variety of programs which will help you to take your idea into an implementation to get more information please feel free to connect with us and and also if you have been inspired by today's discussion don't forget to check out wisc queen website and youtube channel for more amazing content from visola this was just a short summary of the bigger picture which visola is ready to share through her channel uh, with all of you 
Thank you all for turning into Hanson Curry Connect. We hope you found today's episode as inspirational as we did. Until next time, keep striving for greatness and remember that every little step towards your goal counts. Have a fantastic day.